19 years today, April 20th, 1999, two senior students opened fire on their high school, Columbine High, murdering 12 students and one teacher. Kathy Burnow, Steve Kernow, Corey DePooter, Kelly Fleming, Matt Hector, Daniel Mauser, Daniel Rohrbaugh, Rachel Scott, Isaiah Scholes, John Tomlin, Lauren Townsend, Kyle Velasquez, Coach Dave Sanders. We need to say their names. We need to repeat them as a mantra to remind ourselves that they are not just statistics, they are not just victims, they are people. People who had their full lives ahead of them. People like the children at Sandy Hook, at Marjorie Stoneman Douglas, who made the fatal error of simply going to school on an ordinary morning. And what did everyone say in the awful hours and days following the Columbine shooting? They said this cannot, under any circumstance, happen again. But it did. Again and again and again. Surely, we thought, after the 2012 Sandy Hook Massacre, in which a gunman with assault weapons slaughtered 26 people, including 20 first grade children, aged 6 and 7, in a matter of minutes, change will have to come now. How could our politicians, our government, our elected leaders sleep at night if they did not enact real change to keep us safe? The Stoneman Douglas school shooting was the 208th school shooting since Columbine. 208. This does not include the hundreds upon hundreds of mass shootings happening in our, in our nightclubs, in our streets, in our churches, in our movie theaters, in our concert venues, in our clubs. This does not include the thousands of lives I've destroyed in minority and lower income neighborhoods from gun violence and racial profiling or the deaths of so many LGBT plus people and people of color who did nothing wrong but exist. That's right. Just today, a couple hours ago, in a place not far from here, just about two hours in Ocala, there was a shooting at a school. One person was shot and even one person is too many. Do we really need to live in a world where these kinds of tragedies happen continuously, repeatedly, constantly? Older generations have been asking that question for the two decades since Columbine. But this generation finally has an answer to that question. No, we do not. We will no longer sit passively by while we hear politicians offer us their thoughts and prayers repeatedly with no action in sight. Since the Parkland tragedy, the world has seen the power and the passion of this generation, our generation, teenagers still in high school, not even old enough to vote, who have stood up to loudly say, this must change. And what are we asking for? I can tell you what most of us are not asking for. We are not calling for the Second Amendment to be repealed, and we are not trying to ban all guns. But we do believe that the Florida legislature and the U.S. government can actually do something. They can reinstate the federal assault weapons legislation, institute tighter background checks, prevent people with mental health issues and domestic violence records from buying guns, and close guns to a loophole in all 50 states. In other words, we are asking for common sense gun reform. And we know these kinds of steps can make a difference. They have done so in so many other countries around the world. Despite having mentally ill people and black markets, just like every other country in the world, the United Kingdom, having passed gun control legislation in the wake of the school shooting, has not had a single school shooting in 22 years. In the United States, we have had at least 17 school shootings this year alone, and it's only April. We also know that we cannot make meaningful progress on this issue unless we realize that this movement for common sense gun reform is directly related to the Black Lives Matter movement and other powerful calls and other powerful calls for social justice for people of color. This is not a political statement, but simply a fact. Gun violence disproportionately affects communities of color, and we cannot truly solve the epidemic of guns in America without addressing the tragedies that occur on a daily basis for people of color. Does it make sense to allow individuals to purchase weapons designed for war and mass destruction? No. Does it make sense that it is much harder to get a driver's license or allergy medicine than to buy an assault weapon whose only real purpose is to shoot and kill large numbers of human beings as quickly as possible? No. Does it make sense that someone with a history of mental illness and domestic violence can walk into a gun store or a gun show and come out with a gun and assault rifle without a waiting period or even a background check? No.
do you know what will happen if they don't? We will vote them out.